Yo, what's up? So today we'll be installing my new Turbo XS front mount intercooler kit with the blow off valve adapter. Got all the couplers, piping, all the clamps, the relocation thing for the power steering lines, new hose, and a new uh, crash bar. As you can see, this is my BK1 2.0T. And so what you want to start off by doing first is taking off the front bumper and getting everything ready and situated. Don't mind the zip tie. Whoever wants to come, come pick this up. And this too. Another thing, do not take this out unless you have the radiator support brackets because your radiator will be hanging. All right, though. So now we're just going to start taking off the intercooler piping. And I'm going to have to transfer the blow off valve over to the new pipe. And then crash bar, drop this intercooler off. All right, so the kit comes with a new replacement piece for this to relocate this somewhere else because when the intercooler is on, it's gonna to be touching this. I believe if you have an automatic, you'll have like an oil cooler or a trans cooler here. So you gotta figure out what you gotta do with that. And then it goes where the BK1 intercooler was set up in place. If you can see the little hole right there underneath. there that's where the little rubber pieces go back into and then the supports come up and connect right there all right so now what you want to do is disconnect this map sensor just from the plug for right now so that when you pull it out you can just unbolt it but literally just push this and pull back so give me one sec so you push this tab in right here and then you pull back now that it's out you can slide the cold side piping out slide away from underneath Darn. all right so now what you want to do is take a 10 mil Put it on, take it off. Just wiggle it out. come out there we go make sure you do not break this and do not lose these bolts because you'll be using these on the new piping so i just wiped off the center real quick but what you want to do is now take this put it in your new piping right here push it in line it up for the bolts to go back in you don't want these too tight you just want them snug gonna strip the bolts and then that's a whole other headache you gotta deal with also what i suggest for right now you take some clean paper towel or something just put it right there so you don't get any dirt or anything inside the throttle body and now for the hot side you gonna get yourself some vice grips or some channel locks and for this right here how has that weird clamp you're gonna tighten it squeeze it down move it off and you can pull the pipes out so you got one here here um, you might have one here but mine has a regular hose clamp and then you have one all the way down there just keep in mind though this is going to be a little bit different for everyone because i have a bk2 and a cord on mine where you'll have your bk1 you'll be down here in a cord and then i have to take the pipes out from underneath All right, 
so this is where nobody explains what to do so now what you want to do is so nobody really explains what to do here so now this is the power cell line you're gonna literally you just pull this tab back it's a little super easy and then get your little ratchet or something because there's a ball right here all right so right now i'm just going to take off the crash bar All right, so there's one 10 volt on both sides when you take off, and then now three uh, 12 mil, so one, two, and three on both sides. Out with the old crash bar, time to put the new one on, and you'll be using the same hardware. All right, real quick before you end up putting on the crash bar and bolting it in and everything, you want to take this off. This was here, and it's only a 10 mil. You can just zip tie it on right here. If I put the zip tie through there, boom, so it's out of the way because there was literally no space for it. And there's two, so one here and one right here. So do the same thing on both sides. Also, what I had to do, I had to bend the horn brackets back just a little bit but not much all right so now that that's on we can start putting in the piping so i'm just going to start from the hot side and then make my way over to the cold side and then i'm gonna just leave the intercooler out for right now because so we can work with that so what you want to do is you grab the smallest coupler that you have put it on this pipe in this direction and it goes down on top of here get you two hose clamps there's one that's smaller specifically for this one and then the rest are all like this size go get yourself a deep 10 because this bolt is long as shit now that you got this pipe in I'm gonna tighten this hose clamp down this one down and you can just continue from here and again, literally don't even crank down hard on this. Like it doesn't have to be ridiculously tight. Just make it snug to where it's not, where the pipes aren't just sliding right off. Well, that's it. All right, so this L looking pipe is gonna go up underneath from, from the bottom. Cause you can't, I mean, you can put it up from above, but this is gonna be a bigger fight for no reason. So just go from underneath and it'll connect right to that pipe. Now you just grab two hose clamps. So if you're not removing the BK1, like the stock intercooler for the BK1, you can just skip ahead. But right now, if you decided that you want to take out the stock intercooler and get radiator support brackets, just pay attention. Also, I suggest you get a second person to help you hold up the radiator while you do this because you have to take off the radio supports up top in order to even get enough room to wiggle these in and bolt them on. Take off these supports that go underneath like this. And then you have your two 10 mil bolts up top. Taking this off, it gives you some room to move this around. I have the tight holding up so it doesn't just slam down destroy anything same thing as all right so right now you take the bracket under the passenger side headlight right now literally you just maneuver it in real quick boom falls in there you're gonna have a rubber and grommet in there but i'm gonna put it in right after so you just line it up right where the old one was and then you put the bolts right through so I just put the rubber, the rubber piece in. I mean, it's the same thing either way. You can do it now, you can do it later. But the bolts go right through. And then on the back side, you just put the, the nut. You need two hands for this to hold up the radiator, but 
you know, you get it. So now you could just tighten up the bolts. I already did, but boom. Tighten up here, tighten up there. Now back to the intercooler install. <laughs> Yo, but look at that. That's crazy. Take this part, put it in this way. This side to the front of the car. And now, just slide it over. Tighten it down. All right, and so now I'm gonna put on the intercooler. So you have to get the bolts that they provide, and it's four of them. Um, the washers that they gave me are too small. And they just kind of fall right through this. And like, it doesn't hold anything up. It all just falls through. So luckily I already had bigger washers for this. But um, yeah, so you put it through like this. The intercooler gets bolted up right there through there. So I'm going to put the intercooler up right now. All right, so the intercooler is on. All you have to do is just hand tighten them. It's literally still not going anywhere, but I kept it loose just in case I need to maneuver it a little bit before I actually tighten everything down. Also time to put the coupler on and the, the hose clamps. Now I'm starting on the cold side. I just had to run to Harbor Freight to go get this snap ring tool that I thought I had, but I didn't to take off the blow off valve. And I'm gonna swap that over right now. From here to here. So I swap the blow off valve over to the new pipe. And then the map sensor's on there. So now I just put the coupler on both sides and then the clamps tighten it down. This piece goes on the throttle body. So, you know, just remove your Tower that you had in there before. Also, don't forget to plug back in your map sensor right there. Now that you got hose clamps on, I have to use a different one because this one was just not working out for this area. But now that you got everything in, plug back in your vacuum line and then. I use your clamp or zip tie back on. All right, so now the last pipe on the cold side. This one you're gonna sneak right under, just like on the cold side. All right, so now you just take a 13, tighten up all these bolts here, and now the intercooler is secure. And make sure you tighten down all the clamps from top to bottom both sides. Now we're about to work on this. Let's figure this out. So now you're just gonna take off the two lines right there from the power steering so you can put the new the new hoses on. And then you're gonna end up reusing like these little clamps that they got right there. And then mount this part up right on there like that so it hangs right there. Okay, so what I did was put in the new hoses. I zip tied them together so they don't hang around. But you mount it up there, put the car back down, refill the power steering. Um, when you fill up the power steering, make sure the cap is open. Then you just turn the wheels left and right twice, like lock to lock, so you can get the fluid through the pipes. And then top it back off. And then you're done. So once you're done, try test fitting the front bumper. If it doesn't fit, 
you just might have to trim off the back portion right here in order to make it fit but other than that there's literally nothing else you have to do So this is how it looks after you're done, it's pretty clean.